listen up. Are you someone, maybe a team leader or someone that's been in the business a minute that wants to open their own brokerage? This episode's for you. Here are 10 initial steps to take to open your own brokerage. Yeah, join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, hello and welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 239 and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, a week, oh, two weeks ago, last week we talked to Mark Hughes. That was a great uh, episode. It was great to talk to him. But before that, uh, we did our pros and cons of opening your own brokerage, kind of talked, uh, walk through the the uh, opening your own ber- uh, brokerage versus opening a franchise company versus staying with a company that, that allows teams to thrive and grow. Grow. So if you've kind of if you haven't seen that episode, go back to 237 and check that episode out. Um, because now we're going to jump in and start the list of how to actually get that job done and open your own brokerage. We are, and we have a little bit of uh, extreme knowledge on this because we did huh. this. <laughs> we did this in the state of Nevada. So we've taken what we know to be, and I've helped people in other states as well. But it's very state specific, of course. But I think what we've got building here for those of you that are interested, and it might not be now, but maybe in the future, is we're, put, we're going to be putting together an entire guide uh, that would be the step-by-steps for, it'll be like an add-on that we'll have, or individual, but we can also put it with our, we can actually put it with our program that we're creating yeah. for, yeah. Uh, maybe as a bonus or, or whatever. But we're, we're really putting it all together. We're all about a checklist. People get a little bit confused when they reach out to us. It's like, I don't even know where I start. So this guide, if you will, to opening your own brokerage and and whether you do franchise or independent will have kind of the nuts and bolts of what you need to do and it'll get you well on the way for you to do your own research. That's what we're going to do for you. I'm telling you a checklist is a beautiful thing because when you're putting together any starting anything up, starting an implementation or development of something, there's always going to be that step that either you can't get to or for some reason you it's not out of timing from what you're doing. And if you don't have that written down somewhere, you're just going to never do that step. So the checklist can allow you to go back and check the box. And then, you know, there are always going to be unique things that are in each state, but we're, we're right. going to give you our experience. So for example, uh, we learned some of the things that I'll, when I get to these initial steps, we learned because we didn't know about it until we were in the middle of it. And so then why don't we pass that information on so that you can check to see if you have to have, for example, a fire uh, department inspection at your premises before yeah. the, the business license. That was something that we learned, for example. Exactly. Which <laughs> might not be the same in your state. So may not. So this is opening your brokerage part one, 10 initial steps to take. So let's jump into the very first one. Well, actually, let's step into the preliminary planning and brainstorming. So we're taking our episode today uh, from the point of view that you have already gone over the pros and cons. And again, if you haven't, you can go back to episode 237. Right. And you can kind of get our list of what we think are the pros and cons of both of all of it. Or, or should you should you just stay in an independent brokerage or a franchise that supports you building a team was one of the things that we talked about. Because I actually think that's what are the options. You start your own, you join a franchise, and you or you stay in a company that supports you. And it kind of has a lot to do with what are your goals. Absolutely. Because if you just want to be Jan O'Brien, independent broker, and it's me and an assistant and maybe my partner, another person, then being an independent broker, probably being a franchise doesn't make a lot of sense Mm -hmm. because being a franchise is because I want to grow and I need to use all their tools because I don't have all the tools and the, I need all the things that they're going to have in the, the presence and the branding that I don't have because I want to grow a brokerage and have yeah, you want to leverage you want to leverage someone else's in- infrastructure, right? So I lot to do. So we're picking it up from the point of view that you want to start your and today it's all about it doesn't matter if you're independent or franchise you still have to actually open up a brokerage for you to become a franchise somewhere and obviously right. if you're just being independent. So you've done the pros and cons, you've done your own homework, your own research. You've decided that you want to go forward with it, right? Now, if you do plan on recruiting agents, then you need to evaluate and already have a little bit of of brainstorming and your own research into what's going to be the business model for your company. Now, we're going to talk about that in part two. We'll dive into the details on that. But briefly, you should start thinking a little bit about that because that's the whole why. Am I doing it for myself or do I want to have do I just want to have an office of less than 10 people and it's just people I know or do I want to grow? 
either way, if you have people working for you, you need to think about commission structure. What fees are you going to charge? Yeah. Uh, what kind of training tools and support are you going to offer? Or are you going to offer anything? And then brokerage operations, which we are totally going to cover in part two of this, which is the laundry list of things you have to do to really run a brokerage as far as operating it from the back end and how to interact with the agents. Okay. So let's say you've already done all that. Now the very first step. Step one. Is to select a name. Now, oh, sounds so easy, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it, Matt? And let's yeah. just talk about when we did this. We, we had the name. We were looking for something with Home Connect. Uh, we ended up on Home Connect America because we found all these variations of the name that weren't available for .com. And in hindsight, I learned a lesson in this. And it's interesting because I we had an argument, or uh, not an argument, but we've had people feedback. And I look back, like I currently, I currently work at Urban Nest. Now, Urban Nest's full name is Urban Nest Realty. Right. Now, that's, uh, in my opinion, we have something called Simply Vegas here in Las Vegas. In the beginning, nobody really knew what that was, Simply Vegas. Now it's known, it's a real estate company. But one of the things you might want to consider is using the word realty or real estate yeah. in your name. Um, and I think we couldn't use Home Connect Realty uh, because it was taken. It was like a company that was in that, uh, Tennessee, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Because the right. problem is these three things. You, you can come up with a great name, right? Wow, I got the best name ever. But now you're going to need to go check in your state to see, is that business name available? Because you're probably going to set up an LLC or some kind of corporation for liability reasons. So step one, is it even available in your state? And so every secretary of state, every state has a secretary of state space for business entities and you usually can do a search for names. So that's where you need to start, but you can't stop there. You need to talk to your, it's not even your local association of realtors. I have that. I, now that I say that it's more, it could be your association of realtors, but it's mostly your, your business licensing entity is going to need to make sure that there's not a name, that there's not a company that already has that name. They really don't want to have two home connect realties right. in town. And so then you have to decide if something, and they allowed us to do Home Connect America. Now that I think about it, it was not the Association of Realtors. I think they had, it wasn't them. I wrote that down wrong, Matt, so we have to fix this. It was um, the, the governing board, the licensing board. So it's called the Nevada Real Estate Division in Nevada, but it's called okay. like, in California, it's called like, I don't even know, it's got a different name. It's not division. They changed the name of it. Uh, you know, business, the division of business and industry is generally, that's how it is in Florida. And then there is a division of real estate. So it's kind of like that in all states. But anyway, they approved it, but there was another just home connect. And they tried to say to me, you're going to have some confusion about which is which. And so that's just the issue. And it's the, th the third step here is, is there a .com available? And if there's not a .com then you don't really want to go with it because you'd be driving people to your .com if you tried to choose .org or .company or .something else, right? So there's a lot that goes into you. you just a lot. Remember when we did this, we were like brainstorming names and we'd look them all up and like, oh, that's off the list. That's off the list. That's off the list, right? And then there were three of us or, or more actually uh, to you know, uh, uh, putting our, our two cents in so you know it was it was a process it was it was it was fun and frustrating all at the same time so you know, in hindsight i would have used the word realty or real estate better in the name to be clear and then you so one last thing on this it you know it's all about again your game plan your personal game plan if you're a successful agent in your area your market area and you've got a good brand and you're just going to be the independent person and you don't really just want to build a company that you turn over to someone else. And even, even that being said, we can give you in, you can think of everybody around the country that has used their name and they're no longer the broker, but they're a legacy. So that's the other thing. Do you want to be a legacy agent and Jan O'Brien is going to be known forever in uh, the Nevada, Southern Nevada real estate market and has this big company and it's O'Brien real estate or O'Brien realty. Maybe. And maybe that's what it is and that's all good. Or you can have not a, a, a company name that's not related to your name. Those are all the choices you have to make. And it all is dependent upon your goals and who you are and all that. It really, it, it is so funny. It's like you need to pick a lane and then just stay in your lane. Because it's going to be a lot easier for you if you do that. When you start getting a little bit, as the expression goes, too big for your britches, um, it just creates more stress for you. You know, if I was younger and going, and, uh, trust me, 
you're, you're hearing it right here. I have no desire, nor will I open my own real estate brokerage. I'm all about option three, which is being a company that supports me having a team. And I don't have any of those things that go with it. I covered a lot of that in the pros and cons. Of, with uh, that said, though, I mean, you know, we were up for, you know, only about a year, a little over a year uh, before the, uh, you know, the pandemic, which actually was on the foil yeah. for us for a lot of different reasons, not just because of the, you know, because the market actually stayed pretty strong. Um, but the pandemic was our, was our foil, but, um, mm -hmm. but we were getting to the point, right? You know what I mean? It's, it, uh, it was, ex it was exciting, right? And it was fun to watch that grow. So, well, to be fair, the reason I'm saying that is, yeah. um, that, <laughs> and this is why it's not for me at the point I am in my career. That's just me. Right. If I was 20, 30 years old again, I'd be all about O'Brien really Absolutely. and I'd be having my 40 clover and, you know, perhaps I would have gone that route with everything right. that I know now. I don't even know. But the point is, you got to make that decision and stay in your lane. So that's number one. Get your brokerage name, but do your research on those different levels. And yeah, number the two. State, the, your licensing board and then your, um, you know, your uh, get make sure there's a .com. So your L now you need to step to set up your LLC or corporate entity. So this is where you need to. You know, you've already done your research, you got a name. Now you just need to go do it yourself. It's not hard to set up LLCs or someone that knows how to do this and talk to, here's the best advice. Talk to an attorney uh, or somebody, a tax person, because you, or whoever work, maybe whoever you, you professional that you use now to say you're going to be moving to a brokerage because there's so many tax implications for you. Should you have a company, you're still going to do business, you keep those separate. You know, there's all these things that if you're not an accountant or a tax expert, you need to talk to somebody. They're going to, because you want to be able to pay the least amount of taxes, I would hope. And I certainly can't tell you what to do, but you go find that out. And just one reason is to save taxes and to figure out how you're going to do your business and the company's business. And the second is you need an LLC or some kind of corporation for risk management. You don't want to be personally sued. You're now a broker or a broker owner and something happens, you're going to have errors in admission, but you can be sued personally. And if you don't have a corporation for your company, then they're suing you personally and you're a personal asset. So you want everything to be in some type of a corporate entity. Okay. Uh, and then you could file a, D, a, a fictitious name, by the way, DBA. Those are things that you could do when you set that LLC up. So you might be, you know, best real estate LLC, and then doing business as Home Connect America, you know, right. something like that. Now, step three, identify the broker or the broker of record, designate broker. It's called different things in different states. If it's not going to be you, okay? So if it's you're just individual, you know, Jan O'Brien going to open up her own O'Brien Realty with a couple people with me, then I'm going to be the, I could be the designate. I don't have to be the designate broker. That's the point. I could find someone and to be my broker. Uh, to be my broker of record. Now, you need to check for your state the experience and other requirements for someone to be a broker, a designated broker. So just to give you an example, it's change in Nevada. A Nevada broker salesperson license is number one, and they have to have had that license two out of the last four years working full-time, which is designated to be um, 30 hours a week. So a previous broker has to say, yes, this person has worked two out of the last four years, full time, 30 hours a week. They're in good standing. Then they also, to be the designated broker, you have to turn in the, fi the owner has to turn in the financial paperwork to show that you're solvent, that you can, that you don't have any you know, derogatory stuff in your background and that you have at least six months of, that's how it is in Nevada. It could be different in other places. Six months of financial uh, reserves to run your brokerage and that's based on your budget and all these things that you turn in your designated broker. You know what they do now in Nevada? They run a credit report. Mm. Very interesting. So you could just, now they want to make sure that you have someone who's going to manage things and so forth. So that's an example of what you have to do in Nevada. Guess what? It's all in your statutes. You can call your real estate division, your real estate licensing entity, and just simply ask where can you please help me identify what I have to do? This is also where you can find out what you have to do to open your brokerage, all the paperwork you should fill out, which we're going to talk about next. And you say the what's, most, most what's required to be a designated broker. Go ahead. Wouldn't you say the most bigger companies or, or larger uh, uh, companies have a designated broker as opposed to the owner 
of the company being the majority of them. Everyone I can think of in town right now, the owner is not the broker of record. Yeah. And I think that that's obviously for liability reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So you you actually, if you're the owner, sometimes you'd like to be the designated survivor in the situation should there be some issues that come up. So interesting. Well, that being said, if you're the owner broker and you're hiring someone, you know, for a big company, you're still going to stand behind. You know, if, if the broker licenses on the line but you would hope that the owner brokerage company is going to support their designated broker and handle stuff with them right but that's a great point so you may have to do that now step four identify a brokerage office location if this is required now every state has its own requirements in the state of nevada for example you must have a place of business it can't be your home unless you can you have the proper zoning variance that says an office in your home can be used for business. Very hard to get that here. Not to say there couldn't be a place somewhere in the county that you could do it. But for Nevada, you generally need an office location. And it can be, it doesn't have to be bricks and mortar. It can be a Regis Suite type situation. The, the other requirement, and these are the things you have to find out about. I'm just telling you specifically so you can start thinking like, don't assume that you can just have an office in your right. home. Right. You know, go find out. Uh, in California, you can have an office in your home. Mm-hmm. You, know, you literally can have an office in your home and it doesn't have to be zoned. See, it's so interesting how it's different from state to state. The right. big thing in Nevada is, and I think in most real estate division entities that write the statutes for your for your state, the, it's all about the public. The public has to be able to identify the business. They have to know who the business owner is and the broker. So we have a, a statute that says the name has to be somewhere. It doesn't have to be on the building. It doesn't have to be on a marquee. If you're inside of a commercial building, all you just basically have to be on the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, the board, if you will, or when you walk into a building right. and then there's a directory. There's a directory and there's your business name. That would suffice for our real estate division here. And you just send them a picture showing that the public could find you if they were looking for you. There has to be some type of signage. Okay, so go find all that out. Now, if you're going to open up more than one brokerage, um, which, it, you know, we did that actually. <laughs> In hindsight, we probably should have started with one, but we worked through that and we wanted two locations and we, you know, we, you know, found some good deals on that and it was all about growth, right, to support it. But the bottom line on that is you have to identify another broker of record. I mean, not a broker. You can have a broker of record who could be the manager of one office, but there has to be someone else with a broker salesperson's license that meets the requirements, two out of the last four years for here, for example, um, to be the managing, uh, the designating managing broker or office manager. There's lots, a lot of names for it. So go find that out. Uh, don't, don't think that you can just open up another branch. In most states, it's gonna be like, somebody has to be in charge of running that branch. And it's about this, supervising the agents underneath you, okay? So. Find out what you have to do. Even if it's just you, do you need an office location? Can you work out of your house? I don't know. Your state will tell you. Then step five. Now you are ready. You've got all this ready. You're, you should check with your real estate division or licensing entity to see, is there an initial approval process? Because there was in Nevada. We didn't have to submit all the forms initially. What we had to give them was an initial financial form, a full credit report, anybody that uh, on the individual who's going to be the broker of record. And then they took two to three weeks to approve, to do an initial approval. So that's how Nevada does it. They go, let's, before you, we have you fill out these 10 pieces of paper that we need, yeah. we're going to go check your financial record and your credit report and say, yes, you're good to go. Okay. And that's what, we, that's step one. Now, if that, if there is that, if there is a pre approval, then you'll do that. Then there'll be step six, which would be submit all the required documents and fees. So it's very, you know, all these entities have a process. They know what they're doing. Right. In our case, we had to do an initial check. Then they go, congratulations. And I think we had to, we had to at that time submit the name and other things, all the things that we just did in the previous steps. Uh, and that's where they came back and told us, um, hey, you know, you might want to rethink this name there's already another home connect and blah 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 and so then we had to get it like a variance on that now they come back and say you got so many days to complete all these things i think we had 30 days yeah it was something like that we have 30 days that you that now got to, you've got to submit everything else which included the financial statement and then it was like i've got listed one two three four five six eight, eight documents in nevada that were required and it's everything from 
verification of the brokers from the previous brokers that you work to say that you've got full time. There has, there's like, everybody wants to know where your records are going to be kept. Um, they may have some internal forms, a uh, new broker application, a status change to make you go from a broker salesperson to a broker. If you're going to be the broker because you're not the broker, right? You're, you got to like a here where you're working in some company that you're a broker salesperson. So there's all this paperwork terminating from your other brokerage. It's all whatever's going to be specific to your state. And then it all has to be completed and they'll tell you what to do and they'll tell you what the fees are and then you have to send it to them. And go. if they approve all that, that's how they do it here. They say, okay, boom, you're, you're now oh. realty. Good. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, now the next step is if you get the approval, check to see if you're required to have state or local and or local business licenses. Um, here in Nevada, everybody has to have a state business license. And then wherever the physical office sits, whatever entity that's in city or county requires another business license, which have to be paid every year. Now we did that. And here's where I was talking top of the show. We thought we were good to go and we weren't able to move forward because the, because I'd only ever been an agent. Right. And it was really easy to get a business license. But they're like, oh no, you've got an, even though you're taking over an office that we've already inspected, um, we have to send out somebody to check your uh, safety. They have to look for the, um, uh, the smoke fire detectors, right. yeah. the smoke detectors, fire extinguishers. They have to do a safety check. So we had to wait until that happened. That delayed us a couple weeks. So now if we had a game plan of being able to launch and we hadn't looked into whether or not what else do we have to do to open our office right that delayed us um so uh, we and, and the reason we discovered is they wouldn't give us the license for the, the local license until we had this inspection because we were in office so i didn't know that now i know that and i just shared it with you because it might happen to you okay. yeah and these kind of things that come up you know you you maybe can find them out before and maybe you won't maybe they're just going to come up but a lot of it has to, a lot a lot of times it has to it can really mess up your timing because we were actually kind of moving from another company into our own brokerage and timing was really everything during this process so it was uh oh, you know even two weeks there's like oh okay that's a little hitch in the giddy up so good to do as much uh, exploration beforehand as well possible. how do you find out well you call the local yeah. business office and right. say hey i'm opening a new location here's what's going to be is there any requirements i have other than filling up the forms i mean i, I didn't think about doing that but no in hindsight sure. I realize now that you always have to go the extra mile and find out so that's step seven and then step eight is uh set now that you've been uh, licensed and um, meaning the real the real estate entity division entity whatever you want to call it the licensing entity has given you you now have a real license there's a number in the whole nine yards and now you have these in the business licenses had to happen because we couldn't get our association um, office status until we had those things so that was our next step we would go down to say here's a copy of our license and anything else that they needed and we needed to complete a new application to become a branch office so that means you become a branch office with a designated mls code that will show up in the mls they get all your designated broker information because that's going to populate all your listings you know whoever your broker is if it's you every single listing is going to have you as the broker uh, or, or whoever your broker is and then there's a fee and the fee was close to about $1,700. So, um, so that's it. And then if you're going to open up multiple branch offices, there's a main, there's always a main office and then branch offices, same with the state for most places. Uh, and you go through the same process. There may be a fee for that. There may not be a fee, but they'll assign another number. All right. So that was pretty straightforward. That was easy. Now this is a lot of work. If you're, if you're opening a brokerage with a bunch of people or transferring from someplace else or some brokerage closed down and you're opening a new one, whatever the situation is, Step nine is license transfer paperwork. Now it's going to be yours for sure. If it's just you and you're the only licensee, it's going to be your paperwork to terminate from wherever you were to, uh, to go to your new brokerage. That's your brokerage. But then again, everybody that's licensed, that's going to come with you has to do that. So if it's a huge amount of people, you may want to work, you might want to reach out to your licensing uh, division and find out you know, do you have to have an appointment can i come in here with 25 licenses and, and get processed or whatever but follow the paperwork and if you're new to this this is and i wasn't because i've been a broker manager for a long time i knew what was required to transfer people but i just called ahead and said what do we need to do right so 
that is a bunch of paperwork. Okay, so what about, it's term what about fees for that, Janice, or change fee? Usually? Yeah. There's a fee for every license change, generally in every state. Ours is $20 just to change the license from one company to the next or to do a name change, any kind of admit to change your license from broker to broker salesman. So, for example, broker to broker salesman to broker is $20, moving from company A to new company, $20, for example. Yeah. So, and then they want to check for all that. <laughs> okay? Right, exactly. Not and individual then, checks, right? You need to decide whether or not you're going to pick up the tab for that if you're going to pass it on to your agents. Yeah. And obviously, you're yeah. going to probably pick that up, right? So, make sure you have that in your budget. And it's not going to be a huge number, but it's another number that needs to be in your startup. So, and then if you're new to this because you've never managed an office and you don't know about, and maybe you've moved to companies, you got a little awareness of I have to have a, a form 505 and a form 504, whatever the deal is, just call the licensing entity. They're great. You know, just like, hey, can I get learn? And it's going to be online. There'll be, there's like a, you know, for us, it's online. Here's what you need. But if you don't understand all of that, these people will help you, right? So just call and get some help from customer service. Uh, that's step nine, transferring all your paperwork. Plus also transferring into the local association. So don't forget, you're also transferring the licenses. You can't change everybody from this MLS company to that MLS company or, you know, how you, the designation as you show up in the MLS until after the license is moved. So it's a two-step process. Move the license and then uh, do change forms. There's change forms for everything. Change, you know, change me from this company to that company, all right? Now everything should be good to go because and you can't do any of that transfer until you have set your company up as a new MLS office. I hope this is making sense, right? Yeah. Now, that's final a step right? 10, it's a little bit of an administrative thing that will remind you in brokerage operations too, but you should do it right now and get on it, is to get errors in emission insurance. Now, most likely you haven't had it as an independent agent. You might have a lot of people, you know, very few, but I do know people who get an additional insurance coverage beyond their brokerage. But you're now the broker, so you can be sued and your agents could be sued. So we've got some links in the show notes. There's a really great uh, place on the National Association of Realtors site that's just about errors and emission insurance and just some things that maybe some partners through NAR. And then two in particular we've used that are known brands. One is called Crest, the other is called Pearl. There's others, but you could start there and you could start doing just like you would do anywhere. You'd get quotes. Now, this is the thing. When you're new brokerage, it's not incredibly expensive, okay? I think for the amount of people we had, which was about how many people did we start with, like 80 or 100 people? So yeah, around that. 50, yeah. 60, 80 people. I'll say 80. But because we had so many people, um, it was about $3,000 for the first year premium. Then what happens is, obviously, it gets renewed, and then it's all about um, as how many transactions you're doing. And so they have a, a way, the insurance guys will have a way to say, it went up, obviously, is what I'm trying to say. So when you first get started, if it's just you, you probably going to spend a thousand bucks okay even just for you annually and then it's going to depend on how many transactions you do have there been any claims is there any issues and then it, it's just like any insurance it, it'll go up based on you have more claims okay um, or you have more exposure because you have more agents you have more transactions all right but that's a cost of doing business and you definitely want that and then you'll get into all the things with an insurance company about deductibles you'll get into should you have uh cyber fraud coverage and all these other coverages that you probably want to have okay because you could be hacked you got all these private information you know there's a lot of liability that you're taking on so you want to make sure you have good coverage you want to have personal liability somebody comes into your office and um you know falls down and they sue you okay right. so lots to think about yeah and then also think about how you're going to pass that fee along or if you're going to pass it along to your agents <laughs> exactly there's all kinds of things like there and, there, and, and what I learned in the errors and emission thing was <clears throat> those two big companies had like the broker had access to an attorney that we could talk to once a month that was part of our premiums. And, you know, there's a lot of resources to use. So there's, there, you know, you'll learn a lot. You're taking things up to the broker level now and you got to make sure you're leveraging all the resources available to you. That could, by the way, uh, if I haven't said it, uh, is to go to your local state. I did mention NAR and start looking at what resources are available for brokers. Okay. Yeah. Cause you probably haven't been paying attention to that. And there is a lot of stuff that will help you and things that you can do. So what are we going to do next? We're going to do part two. Woo. We're going to do part two in two weeks, right? That's right. And in part two, we're going to take it from, you've done all those initial steps and congratulations. You've got a name and you've got an official brokerage 
that you're ready to open. But this part two is going to be kind of, you're going to need to be doing simultaneously. And that is everything. We're just going to call it uh, setting up your brokerage operations, right? So it's everything from the back end to the front end to getting ready to uh, bring on agents, administrative, all of it. We're going to cover everything from independent contractor agreements to uh, policy and procedures manuals to your, your company SOP and everything in between. Yeah. Talking a little bit about, you know, you got to come up with your company colors and your logo too. So all there's right. a whole thing that, you know, it's right. that's going to cover all the branding. That's all going to be part of our checklist. There's a lot to do. You got to get signs and I mean, materials for listings and sales and right. advertisements, but you definitely need to build a brand. Um, build your brand logo kit, right? So we're going to talk about all the things that go into that because we do have a document for that. We do. We're going to take it to the broker level, right? Yeah, exactly. Good. So that's it for part one. Good stuff. You know, I look back on all that when we were doing all that actually with pretty good memories. You know what I mean? And I look back still because we did so, we did all our own marketing, really. We didn't create our own logo, but we did, once we had that logo, we did everything else on our own, including building our own, you know, web, uh, you know, interface and all of that. Um, so we did that all in Canva, of course, because that's where we do all of our, our marketing stuff. So we still have a ton of Home Connect America stuff in our Canva account. And it is actually kind of fun to go back and look at that stuff. And I'm going to tell you, as always with Jan O'Brien uh, and uh, who she associates with, where we sh really sh shone, shined, shone, sh what is it? Shined um, was in our training. You know, I mentioned before that, you know, we uh, were still around when COVID started happening. Right when that started, boy, did we jump on the bandwagon. And and we started a 30-day work-from-home challenge Zoom training that started practically on the 17th of freaking March when, when everything shut down. You know what I mean? And that 30-day challenge was really good because I was looking at that the other day. And we boy, we did it on the spot, man. We were just like, we got to get everybody motivated. It's this... This is massive what happened. Let's it was, and it was, a, it was a good training program. And I, I was going through that the other day, just kind of seeing if there's other little gems you can pull out. A lot of it was very uh, focused on what you needed to do really in that moment to actually work with people because you couldn't meet them face to face. But it was a good stuff. And, you know, training is a really important part of the process when you're opening your own brokerage. And thankfully, to be Bill Coaching has you covered when it comes to that because we have a great training program, Real Estate Sales Builder, and we are in the process of putting the finishing touches on our Real Estate Sales build our certification course so you can um you know uh train your trainers to actually deliver that course to your agents because you know if you're going to build into a larger company or even if you have a small team and you want to make sure you have a good foundation for your team you need to have that foundational training background and that's a whole nother thing you're going to have to deal with so uh, why deal with that let us deal with it with you so uh, more information on that over at our website, wbnocoaching.com. You can get information on that certification course right on our homepage. There is an inquiry form. You can fill, out, fill that out. We'll get back to you, discuss your training needs, and then how we can actually develop a pro program with you. That's correct. So what else, Jenna, Brian? That's it. It's been doing training and doing real estate, and uh, life is going by very quickly. It is, and and, and and we're rolling into you know May. It seemed like it just started. Now we're like the middle of May, and before you know it, it's going to be summertime. In uh, which is just a crazy thought. I don't. I really understand how time goes so fast. The weather's beautiful here, so I have been getting up and getting out a little bit. I've been very busy. Yeah. And uh, we will get that course out. We did promise it in the spring. It, I promise it will be spring still when we when we release the, the product. Um, we're going to make it. We're making it better than it ever could possibly be. So the uh, the uh, we have until June. In the summer, in the summer, June yeah. first, so. yeah. Yeah. it'll be done by May. No worries. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, all of the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 239. Join us next week for another Ask Five uh, guest to be determined. We're still gonna we're still working on that one. Uh, but then back two weeks again on episode 241 for part two of our uh, opening your own brokerage uh, series. And until then, get up, get out, uh, live the life you've dreamed, and be forever wandering but not lost. Please do.